All right, so as I mentioned, um, the differential equations that you're going to be doing in WebAssign are things that look like this, y double prime plus um, 3y prime plus 2y, and then there might be like a cosine of 3t or something over here. Um, we already know how to solve this with the method of undetermined coefficients. So yes, um, we'll have you do that with Laplace transforms, um, but that's not interesting to me. Um, so I wanted to do an example of a differential equation that we don't yet know how to solve. Um, and remember we talked about uh, when there were distinct roots over here, um, then uh, it didn't matter what order the differential equation was. Um, in fact, we've done it a little bit with linear, like if I have y prime minus 3y equals 0, um, we can treat this uh, the same way we treat this one, the homogeneous case of this one. Remember we said uh, we could just make the differential equation r minus, or the characteristic equation was r minus 3 equals 0, and so the root was 3, and so the general solution was c e to the 3t. Um, we can get that directly. That's the quickest way to solve this. Other ways are either use an integrating factor or um, separate the variables. Those also work, but this is the quickest way. Um, and we can also do a cubic. So like if you had, uh, here's my favorite cubic. So, well, first I'll to give the um, differential equation. Uh, sorry, this is minus 6y equals 0. So then the characteristic equation is um, r cubed minus 6r squared plus 11r minus 6 equals 0. The reason this is my favorite cubic is it factors into r minus 1 times r minus 2 times r minus 3 equals 0. Um, you, you won't need to know how to factor these, uh, but you can do it with synthetic division if you remember that from um, Algebra 2. Uh, if they didn't teach you that, then polynomial long division is the same thing but uglier. Um, okay, so we have three roots, r equals 1, or r equals 2, or r equals 3. So uh, the general solution is y of t equals a, e to the 1t, plus b, e to the 2t, plus c, e to the 3t. And as long as we have distinct real roots, um, that's going to be the solution. This can be as high order as you want. Uh, you may not know how to factor it, but if you did, um, and it factored into distinct real roots, we could do this. Um, this is just an extension of the second order case. Um, so the, uh, the easiest differential equation then that we don't know how to solve is this one. Uh, maybe not this one specifically, but something like this. Um, okay, so where it's non-homogeneous, first of all, so um, a little bit more annoying. Uh, but also, uh, I actually wanted to do this with a zero over here. Um, but then the solution is just y of t equals 0, so that's not interesting. And I'll give, uh, I'll give the easiest initial conditions I can, though. y prime of 0 equals 0. It's a um, third order, so I need three initial conditions in order to solve for uh, what would be three constants. Okay, um, so how we're going to do this is we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the differential equation. If two things are equal, then their Laplace transforms are equal. And then we said in the previous video that if the Laplace transforms are equal also, this original thing is equal, as long as the functions are continuous, which we are going to assume. Um, so this equation is actually equivalent to this equation. Um, OK, the other thing about Laplace transform, it was defined with an integral. Um, so it's linear. So this is the same as Laplace transform of y triple prime plus Laplace transform of y double prime minus the Laplace transform. So you can pull out constants. Um, you can distribute across addition and subtraction equals the Laplace transform of 1. OK. Um, then a couple things we need to know before we continue with this. So let's put a star here. Um, we need a property. Property is ugly to write down. I will show why this works in a future video. But uh, the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of a function, this is notation for the nth derivative, is Sn. Remember, we're, uh, we're eventually getting a function f of s, right? So uh, this is uh, s to the power of n times the Laplace transform of f of t. And then we're going to subtract a bunch of stuff. The powers of s will decrease 
and the uh, sorry, not Laplace transform. Then we're going to get uh, f of zero, and then we're going to decrease again, s to the n minus two, um, and we're going to start taking derivatives. That's the first derivative. We'll have s to the n minus three. The second derivative. I'll start using this notation. Um, so the the number on in the derivative plus this is always n minus one. That's how we can. This is like the zeroth derivative. Um, so minus and so on, and then the last two terms are s to the one, and then the n minus two derivative. So those still add up to n minus one, minus s to the zero, and then the n minus one derivative. And these are all derivatives at zero. Okay. Um, this is the property we're going to use to figure out the Laplace transforms of these uh, higher order derivatives in terms of the original Laplace transform. So you're going to get some s to the n times the original Laplace transform minus a bunch of stuff. And in our case, I chose easy initial conditions, so that'll all go away. Um, so we need that property, and then we also need, um, if there's a function over here, you either need to perform the integration. So um, we can do the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative s t, and then this is f of t, so 1 dt. We can either do that integration, or for now, uh, we'll look it up in the table. I will do the integration in a future video, and you'll have lots of those integrations to do. So uh, for now, we'll look it up. Uh, the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, as long as s is greater than 0. Um, we'll generally assume that all our domain stuff works out. Um, OK, so uh, this is Laplace transform of 1 is this. And for now, we've looked that up. That's 1 over s. We'll derive that later so that you believe me. OK, so now we're, we have enough stuff to solve this differential equation. So what we're going to do, we'll use the property to replace these, these l's. So instead of uh, Laplace transform of y triple prime, we're going to use this property. So n is 3. So we have s cubed. Laplace transform of the original with no derivatives, so y, minus, and this is s squared, f of 0, that's here, and we keep going, minus s to the 1, f prime of 0, minus s to the 0, so we keep going till we get down to s to the 0, f double prime of 0, and then we're done. So all these, it'll be a different number of terms. Here there's three things subtracted, because we started with s cubed. Um, okay, and then we need plus L of y double prime, so plus um, s squared. We're using the same formula, except we're one degree lower. Uh, s to the 0, f prime of 0. And then we had this next thing was minus um, Laplace transform of y prime, so minus s Laplace transform of y. And then here, now we're already at minus s to the 0, f of 0. And then we had um, minus Laplace transform of y equals Laplace transform of 1, which we said was 1 over s, as long as s was greater than 0. OK, uh, what do we have now? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, instead of s, these should be y's. Okay, these are all y's. Apologize for that. It's copying from the formula. Um, and now I've said all of these are zero. I gave nice initial conditions. So actually all these drop off. If, if they weren't zero, you could have um, more polynomials happening here, and you could have an uglier thing. But um, notably, they would be polynomials, right? If, if y of zero was three, it would just be a 3s squared. So that's not hard. So what we see here is we have this mysterious uh, Laplace transform of y. But other than that, we just have polynomials, which means we can solve this. Um, this one's pretty easy, so these all drop off. So we get, let's just simplify, s cubed Laplace transform of y plus s squared Laplace transform of y minus s Laplace transform of y minus Laplace transform of y equals 1 over s. And everything else dropped out was 0. So we can factor out a Laplace transform of y. We end up with s cubed plus s squared minus s minus 1 equals 1 over s. And note, this was actually the characteristic equation with s instead of r. 
of um, the original differential equation, the homogeneous case. Um, this is always going to be the case. This will always show up here. You don't need to remember that because um, you need to keep track of this other stuff if these constants aren't zero. So, so actually do this calculation, but um, that's a good way to check if you're doing it right. And so we get L of y is uh, 1 over s times s cubed plus s squared minus s minus 1. Okay, um, and then we want this factored. Uh, if you don't know how to do it with um, synthetic division, you can always do it by, you can do this one by factoring by grouping. So like if I take out an s squared from the first two terms, this is s plus 1. If I take out a minus 1 from the second two terms, this is minus s plus 1. Remember this from <laughs> algebra a long time ago. Uh, and then we take out an s plus 1 from both, and we're left with s squared minus 1. And then this factor is as um, s plus 1 times s minus 1. So we have an s plus 1 squared times s minus 1. Um, okay, so we have a fourth degree down here. It's factored. Um, or you could have expanded it here. Um, regardless, we go to the table, and it's sad. Um, there's nothing here that's a fourth degree. They're all, the most I see a second degree in the denominator, I see nothing that's fourth degree. Um, okay, so that's not good. Uh, so what is good is we have a technique for making this into a lower degree um, rational functions, and that's uh, partial fractions. Same thing we used for uh, if you wanted to integrate this. We can also use for um, if you want to look this up in a Laplace transform table. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to need, um, and you may want to review your partial fraction decomposition because this one's a little bit uglier. Um, common theme in this course, if there's not uh, all distinct roots, um, it's more difficult to do. So here we have a repeated uh, factor. So we start out as normal. This is a over s plus b over s plus 1. And then we need a c over s plus 1 squared. So it's different about this. And then plus d over s minus 1. That's the most general partial fraction decomposition for this one. Um, so uh, we could, uh, well, let's find a common denominator. So if we find a common denominator on the right, then we get a times s plus 1 squared times s minus 1 plus b times, we have an s, one more s plus 1, and an s minus 1 needed to get the denominator c. We just need an s and an s minus 1. And d, we need an s and an s plus 1 squared. That'll be the numerator if you find a common denominator here. And that has to equal the numerator over here, because left side equals right side for all values of s. So we get that. And you could expand this and get four equations, four variables, and solve for them. But that's difficult. Um, so I, I do want to promote the, the plugging in method, or, or complex analysis co analysts call this the cover-up method. Um, so uh, we just set s equal to all the roots. It's a little bit sketchy, because like s couldn't be any of the roots there. Um, but this method works, <laughs> um, and it's much faster. So set s equal to, let's pick uh, an easy root, set s equal to 0. And what's going to happen is that this will disappear. This will disappear. This will disappear. Those will all be 0. And so we'll just get a times 1 squared times 0 minus 1 is minus 1 equals 1. So a is negative 1. Uh, pick a different root, set s equal to 1. Now this will disappear, it's 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, this is 0, this is 0. We're left with our d term, so d times 1 times 1 plus 1 is 2, squared equals 1, so d is 1 fourth. Uh, third root, set s equal to negative 1. This one will disappear, this one will disappear, and this one will disappear, everything with an s plus 1. So we have c times negative 1 times negative 2 equals 1, so c equals 1 half. And then uh, they all, b, the b term all disappeared, disappeared for all of these. Um, so you just need a different value. So we'll pick um, like 2 maybe. And then nothing will disappear, but we have values for all of these. So a, we'll plug in those values, minus 1. Uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9. 
2 minus 1 is 1, plus b we haven't solved for yet, times 2, times 3, times 1, plus uh, c is 1 half, times 2, times 1, plus uh, d is 1 quarter, times 2, times 3 squared is 9, equals 1. Okay, now you have one equation and you just have to solve for b. So this is 6b minus 9 plus 1 uh, plus 9 over 2 equals 1. We can like cancel out the 1s or subtract 1 from both sides. Um, I'm actually going to divide through by 3 just to make it easier. You don't have to do it this way. Equals 0. Okay, so 2b is 3 plus 3 halves. 3 is 6 halves, so 9 halves. b is 9 over 4. Okay, so uh, we finished this uh, partial fraction thing, and then we said the Laplace transform of y was exactly this. So we're going to write out Laplace transform of y is, uh, a was negative 1, so minus 1 over s plus 9 fourths 1 over s plus 1 plus 1 half times 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 fourth times 1 over s minus 1. And now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look in the table. The inverse applies to each of these linearly. So y is just, we look up in the table for all of these. Let's see, I've got, this is on page 321 of my book. Um, okay, so we're looking for 1 over s, that's this one. That's the Laplace transform of 1. So negative 1 over s is the Laplace transform of negative 1. Plus, uh, it's linear, so we're just going to leave the constant here. We need to look for an s plus 1 in this table. Um, well, that's the next one. s minus a, as long as s is greater than a. So to get an s plus 1, a must be negative 1. So that's um, e to the at, this says. I don't know if you can see it. So e to the negative 1 t, e to the negative t. And then we, we've said s is greater than negative 1. Uh, we had already said before that s was greater than 0, so actually we're already good um, there. Now we ha we need an s plus 1 quantity squared in the denominator. Sorry, move the camera. Um, s plus 1 quantity squared. That looks like this one. And we need a, so squared n plus 1 equals 2, so n equals 1. That means we have a 1 factorial on top, that's good. Um, and then a is negative 1 again, so s is greater than negative 1. t to the n, n was 1, so this is t, e to the a is negative 1, e to the negative t. So we have plus, uh, we have a 1 half out here, t, e to the negative t. If we had needed, uh, let's say it were 3 factorial there, then we just uh, multiply by 6 and then multiply by 1 sixth, so we, we might change the constant out here. Okay, and then plus 1 quarter, we need an s minus 1, that's going to be the same as the previous one, the s plus 1, except now a is going to be positive 1, so that's e to the t. This is e to the t, and then uh, now s is greater than 1, so that's out of our three conditions, s greater than 0, s greater than negative 1, s greater than 1, this is the most restrictive. Um, but we don't even have an s in the final answer, so maybe don't worry about that. Um, okay, and then this is the solution to our differential equation that we initially didn't know how to solve. Um, let's see, is it surprising? Well, uh, the characteristic polynomial factored as there wasn't an s, it was just an s plus 1 squared times s minus 1. Um, we can kind of read the solutions here. The root of minus 1 was repeated, so we had a t in one of the factors. Uh, the root of 1 was not repeated, so that was normal. And then um, we didn't necessarily know what was going to go on there, but uh, it looks like an analog of the method of undetermined coefficients can apply here. Um, so that's cool.